The Lord is risen. This is Father Joe Cesetti. Thank you for joining me once again. Monday, May 18th, is the 100th anniversary of the birth of Pope John Paul II, of St. John Paul II. A tremendous man with a tremendous life, and at the same time, a very difficult life. And such a rich life, it's going to be hard to compress in just a few minutes, but that's what I want to try and do. He was elected Pope on October 16, 1978. I was 17 years old, I was a senior in high school, and he very quickly became one of my heroes. And although I had thought about being a priest since about the time of my first communion, certainly his example gave inspiration to me in my own life and certainly in my own vocation to be a priest. Now, as I mentioned, he had a very hard, challenging life. He was born into a family with one much older brother. His brother may be 14 years older or something like that. His mother died when he was about eight. As he got older, he started to develop a relationship with his brother, who was a doctor at that time. But caring for patients, his brother came down with scarlet fever and he died. He graduated from high school in 1938. He had one glorious year at the university in Krakow, Poland. September 1st, 1939, the Nazis invaded Poland and World War, I, World War II began. Very difficult time for Poland. Very challenging time. He worked in a quarry for a while. He worked in a chemical plant. He came home one night and his beloved father had died. So those he had loved in his life, his immediate family, all died. And his country was dealing with all the Nazi oppression and atrocities that were taking place. He entered the underground seminary and Poland survived and he was ordained a priest on November 1st, 1946. But unfortunately for Poland, they were no longer under Nazi oppression, but they were now under Soviet communist oppression. And this continued for many, many years. And this is the context in which he worked as a priest, as a bishop, as an archbishop, and as a cardinal, and even after his election as pope. So given all that went through in his life at that time. All that suffering. There were many other people who suffered as well. Uh, his best friend growing up was Jewish. There was a significant Jewish population in the town. Uh, his friend survived, but all the members of his family, people uh, that he went to high school with, died in the Holocaust. There was so much bloodshed, so much suffering, so much oppression. And then that just continued on under the Soviet regime. And many people, having went through all that suffering, just question, okay, is there a God? Or if there is one, does he love us? Well, and many of them answered no to both those questions. John Paul II did not answer no. He answered yes. He continued to believe that God is God, first of all, and that God loves us. He was this marvelous sign of hope, this marvelous sign of hope to the world. And as Pope, uh, among his many accomplishments, was playing a role in the downfall of the Iron Curtain. Now, it's a little more complicated than that, but he certainly had a role to play in all of that. He helped to promote the dignity of the human person. And I think that's one of the key themes in his teachings, in his writings, the dignity of the human person. Each and every person is made in the image and likeness of God. And by the enfleshment, by the mystery of the incarnation, 
by God becoming human in the person of Jesus, God has in one way united himself with every human person. Now, I was able to see St. John Paul II a number of times in my life, and I was very blessed to be able to meet him very briefly on two different occasions. This was the first occasion. This is in October of 1993. This is just uh, a few months after I was assigned to St. Therese the first time. And uh, with two of my uh, classmates from the seminary, we were in Rome. We were able to celebrate morning mass with him, which was very moving. And then we were able to uh, briefly meet him and receive a rosary from him. It was a marvelous experience. I feel very uh, blessed to have met him twice. Now, if you'd like to learn more about John Paul II, uh, there are some wonderful resources. George Weigel wrote a book called Witness to Hope. Uh, it's a very thorough biography of John Paul II. He gave a number of interviews for this. Uh, it's a rather large, hefty book. Uh, it is a good read. Now, this book uh, was written, it was published in 1999. Uh, John Paul continued to be Pope until his death in 2005. After his death, George Weigel wrote a sequel called The End and the Beginning. So this picks up with those remaining years of the pontificate of St. John Paul II. Uh, something else moving about his life okay, I think is this theme of mercy. We find a lot of that. And this theme of forgiveness. And when it came to forgiveness, he didn't just talk the talk, he walked the walk. May 13th, 1981, uh, he was shot in St. Peter's Square, there in the Vatican, uh, barely survived. But he very quickly forgave the man who killed him, his name, he was a man from Turkey named Mehmet Ali Aga. And then in December of 1983, he went to the prison in Rome and he personally met with the man who tried to kill him and he offered him forgiveness. Something very tremendous about that, something very inspirational. Lots of times we have find it hard to forgive people, to forgive people who have hurt us you know, sometimes it's even harder to forgive people who have hurt someone that we love. And yet, John Paul gives this marvelous example that hopefully can inspire us and even challenge us. And really that builds on the example of Jesus from the cross saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. John Paul II was this tremendous man who really you could say was a sign of providence uh, in our world at a challenging time. Now, as I mentioned, this is the 100th anniversary of his birth and Pope Emeritus Benedict, who worked with him closely for over two decades, just recently wrote a letter about the centenary of John Paul's birth and he calls him a sign of confidence and hope. A sign of confidence and hope. And as we journey through these difficult times right now, not as difficult as the things that he went through, but nonetheless difficult and they're real problems and we have to face them and we have to try to bear them with grace and with patience and with faith and with love. As we go through all this, May John Paul II be for us a sign of confidence and of hope. St. John Paul II, pray for us.